This is uh, the first edition of Three Questions, and my name is Professor Colburn. This is my colleague, Professor Chapathi. Uh, we both work at Montgomery College in the English and Reading Department on the Germantown campus. Uh, today, I'm going to interview Professor Chapathi. So, first question, Professor Chapathi. What questions should you never ask someone with blindness? Uh, hello, and hello, Professor Coburn. Um, so, I am talking from experience here, and I don't claim to be uh, too much of an expert on in the field of disability or blindness. Um, the kind of questions you should uh, I mean, there are a lot of things that uh, we should not just talk about n what question we should not ask or what uh, what question we should ask and what questions we should not ask. So I have had experiences like I went to a restaurant. A lot of people have said it. Um, if you are with someone who can see in a public place, be a restaurant or some public office, they, and, and somebody wants to talk to you uh, or ask something about you, they will talk to the other person who's not blind or who's not disabled. Uh, some people have reported that they are in a restaurant uh, with a sighted person. Uh, they would take the sighted person's order and they would ask that person, what about him? So these are some of the assumptions that assumes that Blindness or any kind of disability is something that permanently incapacitates you, completely disables you, it makes you incompetent, ignorant, or unable to speak, even uh, that. So questions that um, are not directed to you but are addressed to you are things that uh, that that should be that that are troublesome, and that kind of question should be avoided. Uh, that kind of attitude has to be avoided. So then, the real problem is not necessarily that people are asking the wrong questions, but a barrier in communication in the first place. I I think the barrier of communication is because of an attitude. Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 problem is not really the the communication. It's the attitude. It, it's the attitude. It's basically the assumption that there is no way to communicate, and that kind of sets up a, a, a barrier that socially created. It's created in somebody's mind, in your mind, and you make an assumption as a sighted person that this person is somehow culturally, linguistically different just because he's physically different or she's physically different. So that barrier, you're not sure. And, and, and I have felt that sometimes in the classroom too, that the students are not sure how to address and uh, how to address their uh, questions to the professor. And sometimes I've myself approached them and then they have said, I, we did not know how to say it. Um, so the, the barrier is because of the attitude and that needs to be changed and for that I think from the very beginning from the school onwards there have to be some programs some courses which sensitizes uh, everyone towards the proper way of communicating not only with the disabled but also with the different kind of cultural groups so disability should be thought of as another minority group um, which with which has the equal rights and 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 those people also have their place in the society and you need to talk to them they are the regular buyers they are customers they are teachers they are students they are in every sphere of the society so the attitude is the basic thing that matters it does not really matter what question you have for them uh, it's basically you first have to assume them the, a person first and disable later on. Mm -hmm. um, so let me address what might be a misconception. Someone looking at you in your situation might say, 
my God, how can he teach an English class? How would you address someone who asked that question or thought, thought that thing? What, and I'll add into it, what technologies do you use to perform your daily life or your work? So again, uh, this kind of misconception or this kind of uh, conception or doubt or, or a serious question uh, it is because of the lack of knowledge. Um, it's the assumption being primarily a, a teacher in a college is a lecturer, so lecturing is um, verbal. It should not be too difficult um, to to speak to the class and. and uh, if, if you are lecturing well, if you are speaking well, um, then students will listen to you. But yes, the question of English a little more different in the sense that you are teaching language um, um, and not literature, uh, you are sometimes telling things that need to be noted and you ha students have to pay attention to. Um, in terms of the technology, yes. Um, so, so the assumption being that if, if I'm teaching, I am supposed to be able to read. Um, I use a device that converts every text into Braille. Um, and um, whatever I write, um, that can convert into Braille. And I can read it. Uh, that's how I would take attendance. I would read my notes. Uh, the other method is obviously using screen reading software, which is very common now. So your computer reads aloud what you have uh, on the screen. So that's that's another way uh, that I use to, a screen reading software called JAWS for Windows. Uh, Apple has its own built-in screen reading software. So it will read aloud whatever there is on the screen, and that's how I access the console in the classroom and I use the uh, the screen in the classroom so that the students can uh, take notes whatever I write is on the screen and I know what is on the screen because of the screen reading software and students can take notes uh, whatever they see on the screen based on that so that the, primarily there are these two technologies uh, one is screen reading software the other is called the braille display which converts every written text into Braille. So depending on your needs, uh, you can use one of, one of the two. Okay, final question. Uh, when you spoke t with uh, my class, when you spoke to my class, you talked about uh, why we shouldn't use uh, phrases such as blind to the truth or fell upon deaf ears, and you talked about other um, terms and phrases that we shouldn't use and the misconceptions behind them. That, I know your position on. My question, however, and it relates to that, is what is your definition of the term politically correct and why do you think people use that term politically correct? Well, that's a... Uh... I, I, I assume that that's a general question not relating to just disability. Um, politically correct is um, is a problematic term in the sense that we seem to be um, thinking that there is a proper way of doing everything and even if by mistake somebody says something different um, we judge that person for being insincere or sometimes inferior because lack of, lack of education, uncivilized, uncouth. Um, I, um, so politica politically correct for me means that it does not uh, hurt someone but is also the... we, we need to see uh, the, the attitude um, that that comes from the question, so uh, question or statement, so it's it's not just the the language. It's also what's in the mind of somebody. So what, what's the perception? Um, what's the conception? What is the general attitude of the person, which matters? So if somebody.
calls me nice things and uses proper politically correct terms and then is not willing to do things rightly for people with disabilities, for instance. i give you an example. Um, I was, um, I once forgot my key to the classroom in this college itself and I called the, uh, the help desk to the security who would send the key to open the door and I kept waiting <clears throat> uh, outside the class and this gentleman and the gentleman comes and did not open the door he just left and I did not realize that the person has already come and gone because he saw some people and disabled person uh, and not the teacher there so his assumption was um, that and when I talked to him later on he was so nice and um, without realizing the mistake he made uh, he was um, he was talking to me properly and there's nothing politically incorrect in what he um, said to me or the way he talked to me later on after the incident um, but this uh, whole perception that the blind person cannot be a teacher was in his mind it's it's not it's an attitude that he himself did not create it's some something in the society uh, that is based on some kind of misconception and so his his speech was politically correct but this political incorrectness in behavior is not something that is is his fault so i think that there is the political correctness in terms of disability it has to be fixed as i said earlier with education that has to be the sensitizing people from the very beginning from the elementary level of education uh, would be something that is essential to change this kind of attitude so let me let me add to what i was saying and, and perhaps get toward what i was what i was thinking and i, I liked your answer but my my thought is about people from the right the president is not the first one the president president trump is not the first one to use the term politically correct do you think that the term politically correct is a scapegoat for treating people certain groups of people as second class second class citizens so they'll say oh well you you're you're criticizing me because i'm not politically correct politically correct has a negative connotation as being um overly sensitive if if someone is overly sensitive they're going to be um, overly sensitive to whatever terms you're using and that person is in the wrong do you think that the term politically correct is a scapegoat for prejudice basically for, for justifying the prejudice yes yeah. yes um, th that's that's how it has become and and for that reason I mean I do not pay too much attention to what's politically correct, but what's in somebody's mind, what some, somebody's doing. Um, I have been called snowflake uh, on uh, social discussion forums and um, so... What's a snowflake? I don't a, know. <laughs> snowflake is a term that uh, people on the right invented for because they didn't want to use the term politically a snowflake there can be just an emo emoji which, which can be sent um, to, to suggest that you are easily offended I see you cannot take the criticism and, and and you're right um, that is a kind of scapegoating of impinging uh, your bias your, your so in some cases racism in some cases ableism in some cases uh, ageism sexism or whatever mm -hmm. kind of ism mm -hmm. we can think of um, that uh, that th that kind of bias gets justified when you and um, and, and the attack on political correctness has been invented for justifying that that attack I agree okay uh, thank you very much. Uh, this, is the, this was the first edition of Three Questions. We want to thank uh, Professor Tripathi for joining us today and uh, be on the lookout for more 
uh, videos from the three questions series. And thank you, Professor Corbon, and thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Hope it helps some people to um, bring some attitudinal changes towards people with disabilities.